Hi everyone, welcome, welcome back. Welcome back to the Divine Healing with Love experience. Welcome back to the Capital L-O-V-E tribe. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. Thank you for shining your light. Thank you for loving yourself. Thank you for honoring yourself. Thank you for showing up for yourself, for healing, for doing this work, for tapping into your energy, for daring to be bold, daring to be brave, being confident, you know, learning more about yourself, your lineage, coming, becoming your best version, okay? Thank you for just being here, being present. I'm eternally grateful for you. I'm grateful for who you are. I'm grateful for you shining your light. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. My name is Nicole. Today's Pick a Card, we're talking about healing generational curses, okay? What generational curses are you healing? How are the ancestors helping you to heal this? How, um, what support do you have available? What do you need to know? And also, what do the ancestors want for you to do to help move this process along with this journey of healing, working together to, you know, again, heal the family lineage, heal yourself, so the next generations and the future generations aren't dealing with the same issues, okay? Pile one. Sacred breath and sound, life force communication, okay? Pile two sacred purpose, eternal flame, ancestral legacy. And pile three, brilliant beliefs, luminous life force, personal power. Okay, pause the video if you need to. Um, meditate on this. If you feel called to choose more than one pile, that is okay too. Trust yourself. You know, there are no rules here. You just trust yourself, okay? Timestamps are linked below. If you would like a personal reading from me, that information is linked below as well. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in your reading. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to the Capital L-O-V-E Tribe. Welcome back to the Divine Healing with Love experience. My name is Nicole. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for being present. Thank you for doing this healing work. Thank you for becoming your best version. Thank you so much. Today's pick a card, we're talking about how can you heal generational curses, okay? Messages from the ancestors. Okay, so sacred breath and sound life force communication. So let's talk about the generational curses, okay? Um, some of the generational curses are centered around communication and centered around the truth, okay? There's been this avoidance of the truth or avoiding speaking about the truth or expressing yourself truthfully or freely or honestly within your family, okay? Not just necessarily you. That could be the situation for you as well, but that's just a generational trauma and issue within your ancestral lineage. There's this energy of not, not feeling supported with expression, not feeling brave to express yourself, not feeling not feeling like you could be open, you could be honest, you can be yourself, okay? So there's trauma and curses around truth, integrity, free, freely being able to communicate, freely being able to express yourself, and being understood. There's an energy here of feeling misunderstood and feeling rejected because of that level of wanting to be honest or wanting to be able to openly communicate. Let's get some more out. And also with the dolphin energy here, the dolphins represent intelligence, but the dolphins also represent like um, play, fun, loving energy, free energy. So there's energy around here, not being able to be able to really be your full self within that, like within the realm of communication. And also just like freely being able to like have that fun, loving energy within the family, like really being yourself. This is what I'm feeling like, that like there's energy here where it's like individuals in the family felt like they couldn't be their, their true selves. They couldn't really be, you know, who they really are. They had to put this mask on and they had to pretend to be someone else in order to gain acceptance or approval within the family, okay? Let's find out some more. Nine of Cups, 
Three of Wands, <clears throat> excuse me, Seven of Wands, King of Pentacles, and Justice, okay. All right, let's talk about this. Generational, heal generational curses and trauma here. Okay, there's trauma here around. The, again, with that justice card there, that's not the typical image for justice. This is about being able to enjoy life freely as yourself. And so there's trauma or there's curses around people being able to be themselves within, um, be themselves fully within the family and have that acceptance and love for really being yourself. There's a lot of curse energy or trauma energy around that, meaning people feel like, again, like I was just saying before, they can not be them full, their full self or their honest version or, you know, they didn't feel like they can gain acceptance and love in that way. They felt like they had to be someone else in order to gain acceptance. So when people, when individuals in the family have tried to show their true self, show or express themselves, communicate who they really are by saying certain things or speaking about certain interests, things like that. That was met with rejection. That was met with ridicule. That was met with criticism. And it made individuals in the family not feel good enough. Now, this could be you. This could be other people in the family. Or this could just be just this energy that's within the family. I'm feeling for many of you, this is multiple people within the family. There's this energy of a lot of pretending, a lot of, you know, let me say something that I think is funny that everyone will like, or let me talk about topics that feel good for everyone, or let me talk about things, let me express myself in a way where they will enjoy it, they will like it. Um, also, it's like this energy of, let's just say within the family, let's say politics come up. This is about everyone pretty much agreeing and being on the same page because if someone goes against what someone else feels, then this person is now being like, you know, the black sheep, the one, the odd one out. And it's not only just like, like the energy is felt, you know what I mean? It's not just like a situation where it's like, okay, that's Powell's opinion. Let's just respect Powell's opinion and like no big deal. No, it's kind of like, again, judgment, criticism. Why do you feel like that? Where did you come from? Why do you think like that? What makes you believe that? What makes you think almost just like you are not good enough or your opinion and your level of free thinking and things is not accepted here. So don't bring it to the, it, don't bring that here. That's kind of like the energy, okay? For some of you, another energy of generational curse here is about expansion, expanding into who you really are and not being afraid to travel that path of not being like everyone else in the family. Many of you are very different. You're very different. You're very unique but you're not like the other people in your family. Many of you, many people in the family, it's not just you again. This could be you or this could be other individuals in the family. There's this energy within the family here for Pile One where it's like, it's almost just like, I'm not saying that everyone is alike. I'm not saying that, but it's like when someone does something differently, people in the family take that as, a slight against them, or they take that personally. That's what I'm getting. It's almost like people in the family, in your family here, when someone does something differently, or they go on their own path, or you know, they're just not like everyone else, they're saying different things, they're moving differently. People in the family take it personally. People in the family take it as, oh, Pal One thinks they're better. Pal One doesn't know us anymore. Pal One, they're on a high horse. Who does Pile One think they are? You know, it's all of that. And it's not true. It's just you're different or other individuals have been different in the family. And there's always been at least one, okay? For your generation, it may be you. But it's always been at least one 
through the line I'm hearing for your family, Pile One. And many of you are the ones that's breaking the mold and doing something different. And you are just coming out of that. You're just going to do your own thing. But other individuals in the family didn't have that courage, didn't have that bravery. And what's happening within your family is there's a lot of that rejection energy going around because people are taking things personally and people are feeling like when someone does something different or when someone says something different, now they feel personally attacked because they're judging themselves. There's a lot of judgment energy within the family here for Power One. And this judgment energy is being mirrored and reflected on other individuals in this family. So when someone says something, they're not meaning to be offensive or they're not meaning to hurt anyone, but someone else is taking it as judgment and criticism because there's just this mirroring energy going on of judgment, rejection, and criticism. And it's like, that's a big energy here. And it's leaving a lot of individuals in the family feeling rejected, feeling left out, feeling emotionally impoverished, feeling like no one understands me, no one gets me, but I'm just going to shut up and just go along with everyone else because I don't want to feel that energy. So part of that generational trauma within the family is about being yourself and being brave enough to be yourself and freely speaking and doing the things that you want to do and trusting yourself. And this is about building that foundation of loving yourself and accepting yourself from day one and not looking to the family for validation or acceptance. You have to find that within first yourself first, because they are not going to automatically give that to you. They're just not because they're not loving and accepting themselves. Again, there's a lot of mirroring going on. So many of you are the brave ones, chosen ones to push forward and move forward like, hey, I am going to love myself. I am going to say what I want. I'm going to do what I want. Now, let's find out how are the ancestors here, um, how are the ancestors helping you to heal, helping to heal your family, helping you, helping you to heal this? Okay, let's find out. Softly, softly, the tender touch, inner trust, come to life, receiving. Okay. The ancestors here are helping by, they're helping to support you and other individuals in the family because this is, again, this has been a generational issue for many generations here, at least six, okay? For many of you, it's been like eight or nine, but at least six here. They're helping you to really, they're helping to support you because they want you to trust yourself and they want you to love yourself and they want you to accept yourself. When you trust yourself, you trust your journey, you trust what you're here to do, you trust the thoughts and the feelings that you have and you trust what you have to say and you express that in a soft, gentle way, having that empathy, having that compassion. When you take yourself out of the equation and you understand that these people are not, some of the things that they say, some of the things that they do are hurtful are harmful, are dangerous, but it's not because they don't love you. And some of you may argue, well, yeah, they don't love me. That's not true. What it is, is, is that they don't love themselves. They don't accept themselves. They are judging themselves. And when you are in that energy, when you don't love yourself, you don't accept yourself and you judge yourself, that energy is being reflected in your outer world. Therefore, you are reflecting that energy on someone else. So it doesn't matter what is going on. It's being mirrored. But when you know yourself, when you love yourself, when you accept yourself and you don't judge yourself, you will be able to see when someone is replying back or saying things to you, you will be able to see what place that's coming from. And you will be able to have empathy and understanding of they're saying that because they don't love themselves. They're saying that because they don't accept themselves. They're saying that because they judge themselves every single day. They're very critical of themselves and they're not kind to themselves. When you are the exact opposite, the ancestors are supporting you to love yourself, be kind to yourself, not to criticize yourself, not to judge yourself, not to be so harsh on yourself because these other individuals in your family, that's what they do. That's all they know. They don't know how to love themselves. They don't know how to be kind to give themselves grace, to forgive themselves. They don't know how to do it. So they're supporting you in that. And they're supporting you with having more empathy for these other individuals and that understanding that they just don't know. So someone like you, you're scary. 
You know, you're saying what you feel. You're doing what you want. You're free. You love yourself. It's evident. You trust yourself. You're intuitive. And you're on a path here, a path of enlightenment. So that's scary because it's like they're in the dark ages. They're not enlightened. When you're not on that path of enlightenment, you're in the dark ages. It's like you're in the darkness. The ancestors want you to be able to receive. They want you to be able to receive the the kindness, the gentleness, the care, the compassion, the empathy that they give you because they're trying to help you to be this for yourself so you can bring that energy to your family. And this doesn't mean you have to be around your family. When you heal, they will heal. When you love yourself, they will love yourself because you're energetically entwined and connected. So you don't need to talk to them because because some of you are not speaking to them and that's okay. The ancestors are saying you do what you want. You don't have to. But they are going to, that energy, just because it's coming through you and you're healing it, they're going to feel it too. So continue to allow yourself to receive that support. Continue to allow yourself to receive that help from them and bring these things to life. The more you bring yourself to life, the more you get to know yourself, the more you honor yourself, cherish yourself, honor your gifts, your creativity, be passionate about the things that you're here to say, the things that you're here to do, the more you do that, the ancestors are going to continue to help you bring this best version of you to life. You are coming out of that darkness. You're not in the darkness like these other individuals. The light is on for you. You're bringing yourself to life. And the ancestors are helping you by subtly, softly, gently bringing you to this place of enlightenment, love, compassion, joy, and empathy. Okay? Now, let's see how... Let's find out how can you help with this journey? What do the ancestors want for you to do to help? Sacred Fool. The perfection of your life. Heaven sent. After the storm. Okay. How can you help? The ancestors want for you to see yourself as being as a gift. You are a gift. Okay, your gift to your ancestors, your gift to the lineage, your gift to your family. You are a gift to humanity. See yourself as a gift. And this is not in an egoic way, but this is about seeing your divinity, your purity, your gifts, your creativity, your passion. Okay, seeing all of you and all of your glory and knowing that that energy is coming from a divine places here within the universe. Okay, so the more you love yourself, the more you accept yourself, the more kind you are with yourself, empathetic, compassionate. When you do that, that's you doing your part, forgiving yourself, honoring yourself, honoring your beauty inside and out, being gentle with yourself, giving yourself grace, being kind. Like it's okay. It's okay if you want to take a nap. It's okay if you don't take that job opportunity. It's okay if you rest. It's okay if you made a perceived mistake, quote unquote. It's okay if you don't do certain things. Like, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay if, you know, you've made mistakes in the past. Forgive yourself. Give yourself that that grace. Continue to embrace the changes. Continue to embrace the lighter side of life. Continue to have a balance with work and play. Continue to laugh, to bring joy into your life to embrace not taking life so seriously, enjoying life, enjoying the journey, enjoying the ride. It can feel so heavy. It can feel very challenging, but there's so much joy, peace, love, and harmony here for us to enjoy. Enjoy those parts of life as well. That's you doing your part. Enjoying your journey, the perfection of your life. Your life is perfect. I know we always like, like, there's no such thing as perfect. Yes, but your journey is. And the reason why is perfect for you. It's perfect for you. Your journey is absolutely the way it's supposed to be. It's your story. It's your narrative. There's no one's, no one has a story like you. No one has a journey like you. No one has been through what you've been through. You are a unique, rare, one of a kind individual. The more you love that, the more you embrace that, the more you say, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. There are no regrets. There are no mistakes. There are no what ifs, should have, could have, would have, none of that. 
my journey is perfect and it's me and it's who I am. I am who I am. I'm becoming my best version every single day. I continue to show up and be my best self. And when you continue to embrace new beginnings after the storm, number one here, this is about that new beginning. This is about you know what? You've gone through hell and back. You've been through some things, but you continue to stand up. You continue to embrace the abundance here, the joy here, the love here. You continue to start a new beginning, cherish new beginnings. You continue to become your best version. That's what the ancestors are asking from you. And the more you do this each day, it may feel overwhelming at first, but once you start doing it, it doesn't feel so heavy. It doesn't feel so overwhelming. It doesn't feel so bad. In fact, it feels amazing. And you're like, wow, it feels good to give myself grace. It feels good to speak kindly to myself. It feels good to just cherish my feelings and validate myself and, you know, affirm everything that I feel. And I'm not crazy. I'm not, you know, it's okay if I feel rejected. It's okay if I felt abandoned in the past. It's okay if I have resentment. But deal with it. Don't stay in it. Unpack it and love yourself through it and love everything that you are and know that you are heaven sent. And you're so divine and you're so pure. Okay, now let's get your final messages here. Let's find out your final messages, okay? Courage, strength, fierceness, family. Wow. Sacred gratitude, reverent appreciation, prayer, calming the waters, peaceful self-regulation, friendship, support, fun, unity, play. Many of you, you know, the energy coming through here is that embracing more play, having more balance with work and play, having time to enjoy the fun, lighter side of life, okay? Um, embrace friendships, embrace more unity, embrace more fun, embrace more of that balance, that love, that fun, loving energy, okay? The more you embrace that and have that balance, because many of you, you know, not only are you working within your career, you're also doing a lot of emotional healing, you're doing ancestral work, you know, you're working on yourself. That's a lot of work. Honor that within yourself and honor the fact that you do need balance and you need to have fun and you need to connect with people and you need to unite and play, okay? So make sure you have a balance here. This is what the ancestors want for you. They want you to continue to be strong, strengthen your abilities, strengthen your confidence, be fierce. Know that you are so supported. Your ancestors, you have a lion spirit animal here as well. Many of you come from royalty. You have a royal ancestral lineage because lions they represent royalty here so you know and this is about again that confidence energy that's that solar plexus energy you are fierce you are strong you are protected you are loved you are valued okay be strong courageous and bold have that gratitude have that just that sh deep level of gratitude deep appreciation for yourself for your lineage your ancestors for your journey it's a big emphasis on having that gratitude for your journey and that gratitude and that support that you have from the spiritual realm, from your ancestors for doing this ancestral work. I'm proud of you. Your ancestors are proud of you. Please be proud of yourself because this work is not easy and you are healing the previous generations and you're healing future generations to come from the work that you are doing right here, right now. So congratulations, you're doing an amazing job, but please be grateful for who you are. Be grateful that you're a chosen one. Be grateful that you're doing the work and you have the energy to do it and you're brave enough to do it because it's not easy. And finally, lastly, this is about peaceful self-regulation. This is about you being, you self-regulating yourself, honoring peace, Peace being that building block to your foundation. Having peace as that foundational block, grounding yourself in peace, honoring peace, putting peace as something that you value every single day. No one will disrupt your peace. No one, nothing, no situation. And that if something does try to disrupt you and your peace, you know how to safely self-regulate yourself and come back to a place of balance, harmony, joy, and peace. Where you could block that noise out. I see 555 five, five on the clock. That's change coming in. Some type of, so some of you, drastic change I'm hearing. 
some type of change is coming in in a new beginning. But anyway, back to this. This is about you having that ability to calm yourself down, to center yourself and come back to being one. One with yourself, one with humanity, one with the universe, one with earth, one with animals. Come back to that and block the noise out and know that nothing will disrupt your peace. And when they try it, you know how to bring it back down. They're not going to get your power. They're not going to get your energy. They're not going to take you off your path. They don't have that power to do so. You're too fierce for that. And you're not going to allow them to do it, okay? Please be proud of yourself. If no one told you they love you today, I love you. Thank you so much. You're doing an amazing job. Please do something great for yourself. Treat yourself to something nice. You deserve it. Your ancestors are saying, we got you. We got you. Treat yourself to something nice, something that you want to treat yourself to. You deserve that gift and your ancestors are paying for it. It's just whatever you want. Love yourself. Honor yourself. Cherish yourself. Be kind to yourself. Forgive yourself. Love your journey. Love your divinity. Love your purity. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Hi, pal. So two thank you welcome welcome back to the divine healing with love experience welcome back to the capital i love the e tribe thank you thank you for being here thank you for your love thank you for your support i'm so grateful for you thank you for showing up and doing this healing work my name is nicole let's get into this sacred purpose eternal flame ancestral legacy many of you i just have to start off by saying this you are a chosen one okay the ancestors chose you the ancestors chose you to do this healing work they chose you to break generational curses to break generational chains to heal generational trauma Okay, it's going to look different for all of you. It's going to show up different for all of you. But many of you are making big moves within your lineage for the next generation and the generations to come. Okay, and you're healing the past generations, the pain, the trauma, the curses and the wounds from the past generations. Many of you, the ancestors are giving you the keys to the legacy. You're wearing, you know, you're holding the legacy down on your back. And many of you know this. Okay, well, some of you do. Some of you know, you know, you've known for a while now that it's on you. And, you know, I have just have to tell you that some of you may feel the weight of that. And that may feel very daunting sometimes. Maybe you feel overwhelmed by that. Maybe you feel like it's only you and you know everything falls on you. And your ancestors want you to know, we got you. I heard that. They said, say it loud and say it again. We got Pow too. Because they understand and they know the type of, you know, what you have on you. You know, they know what you're carrying. They know what you're dealing with. They know what they've chosen you to do. And they're saying that they wouldn't have chosen you if they didn't feel like you were ready and they didn't feel like you couldn't handle it. And also they wouldn't have chosen you if they didn't feel like they couldn't support you. You're fully supported, fully protected. They got you. For some of you, they're saying, call us, call on us for help. You don't call on us enough. You do too much by yourself. You can call on us for help. Okay. So Let's get back into this. I just had to just say that someone needed to hear that. So eternal flame here, sacred purpose. Many of you, part of your purpose, again, because you're a chosen one, your purpose is to heal the curses within your family, okay? To heal that trauma. That is a big part, a huge part. For many of you, it's a focal point of your purpose. It's almost like everything else surrounds that. Like, you know, if you just think about like, this is a teacher in me. Think about like a um, a diagram, right? Okay. Just I'm doing a circle here, right? It's like ancestral legacy is in the middle. Everything else aligns to that. Other parts, like many of you have this grand purpose and it's so many different components to your purpose, but a big part of your purpose is ancestral legacy. That is like the foundation of it. So all these other things that you do, aligns to that okay so you may be a life path four life path three life path seven here as well or 11 um many of you okay i'm just gonna have to just go ahead and want to say it some of you have received a lot of hate in your family it's a lot of jealousy and for some of you it may be people questioning you questioning your leadership questioning your ability to, ability to lead, questioning like 
you know, your stability or questioning like your mental stability, Mm -hmm. your ancestors need for you to know they're here saying that's part of the, the cursed energy within the family. It's like when someone brings in that radical change or when someone brings in that new energy to push things forward or that leadership energy, it's always been met with oh, this person doesn't know what they're doing or this person doesn't have what it takes. Your ancestors are saying, you need to stand firm and you need to stand tall and they need for you to start saying you've been chosen flat out. Like uh, your ancestors are just not playing. Many of you have revolutionary ancestors here. You know, they didn't back down. Um, You know, they died for what they believed in. They were freedom fighters. You know, they they fought against the systems. And they're saying you need to start stepping into that rebellious, radical energy because they're saying you need to stand up to this family, these family members and just flat out say, look, you've been chosen. And you can even say, hey, listen, y'all don't even even need to understand what that means. Just know that I know. You know, some of you need to just say it like that. I'm going to be honest and I'm not trying to like say it like you got to be rude to people, but they're saying that like, that's been an issue within the family. People questioning people when they try to step up to lead. Many of you come from families that have been so broken and disjointed and fragmented because no one stepped up to lead. Or when people tried to step up and lead, it was always a bunch of criticism. And so, or judgment. And so it's a situation here where it's like, because someone did try to step up and lead and other people in the family knocked them down because maybe they wanted to lead or they just didn't trust that individual for whatever reason. No one led the family and everybody's just been on their own page, not moving forward. And the ancestors are saying, no, fuck that. We're done with that. Like this is Pow 2 has been chosen. Pow 2 is going to step up and Pow 2 is going to speak on behalf of the ancestors. And some of you come from a family that don't believe in that, or they're just not down with that, or they're just not in tune with it, right? So it's not even like, it's up to you to be like, look, you know, like you're really going to have to really be like, look, I know what I'm doing. And they're not going to, you're going to have people that's not going to like that. You're going to have people that question you. You're going to have people that talk shit, but the ancestors are like, you've been chosen. You see her hand is up. You see how she's looking. She's like, I know what I'm here to do. Don't play with me. I'm fierce. I'm bold. I'm leading this family. I'm showing us the way. That's it. Well, let me get these cards out. Many of you, your ancestors are fired up here. Six of swords. Prince of Cups, Queen of Coins. So that's Queen of Pentacles here. Okay, the Tower. Yeah, let's see. Mm-hmm. So the Fool and Four of Swords. Okay, many of you, part of the curse here or the curses within the family here. Again, people have tried to step up and lead in the past. And this is for many generations, okay? It may even be within your generation because some of you come from a big family, a large family here. And so people, again, they tried to step up. They tried to say, hey, this is what we need to do. Other people in the family, their egos were involved. They didn't like it. They didn't want to trust people. There's a big energy here with ego issues within your family with... um you know, it's like a lot of ego, okay? It's a lot of people that think they know what they're doing, but they have no damn clue. Um, it's a lot of people, and I'm not saying that they're not integral in moving things forward within the family, but the family needs a leader. And the ancestors are coming through very firmly, strongly saying, you have been appointed to lead the family. I don't care if you're 23. I don't care if you're 53. I don't care if you're 14. You have been appointed to lead the family, Point blank, period, hard, stop. Now, you chose Pal 2. You have been appointed to lead the family. Now, does that mean you have other people who can help you and support you? Absolutely. But they're not the leader of the family like you are. You are meant to lead the family. Now, for some of you, everyone doesn't have a large family. Some of you, this may be your family that you have. And then, you know, that's just going to kind of like grow and evolve or however that's going to look. But some of you, you do have a large family and your parents and, you know, you have uncles, aunts, and you're meant to lead them too. 
You know, you may be 23 watching this. I don't know why I keep going back to that number, but you may be 23 and, you know, your parents and extended family, you are meant to be that voice of reason. You are meant to come in and lead and bring things forward. There's been a lot of stagnant energy. There's been energy around not moving forward because it's like, what is that saying? It's too many cooks in the kitchen or something like that. I don't know. Like there's, it's too many, like, you know, there's just, no, there, it's too many people trying to lead, but no one really has what it takes. And it's too much ego. And that's been a big issue for your family. And it's been generations of that. And it's really slowed things down. It's really brought things to a standstill. Many of you, it's like, there's so much more abundance and prosperity meant for you and your family by you stepping up and leading because for some of you it's like, you know, financial matters within the family that there's been no resolve and there's been going on years of like fighting and arguing over things. It could be property, it could be a home, it could be just material world things that have been arguments and there's just been no structure around that. And many of you have been appointed to sort it out and for some of you, I'm going to be honest here, your ancestors are saying part of the slowdown with the prosperity or the abundance for some of individuals or maybe even for you within the family is because no one has stepped up to really lead the family. There's been, you know, no one has stepped up to say, hey, OK, let's let's figure this out and have some difficult and courageous conversations. And so the ancestors are saying, like, we got you. Like, yeah, you are going to have to have some tough conversations, but you're so supported and you're going to know everything that you need to say and you can speak up boldly and freely and not have an issue with it. I'm just thinking about Infinite Waters, Ralph Smart. I love his channel. He's He says, what does he say? Speak the truth and speak up freely and boldly, even if your voice shakes. And for some of you, your voice may shake a little bit because it may feel very intimidating. You may feel like, you know, they're going to attack you. They're going to say this and say that. No, your ancestors are like, we got you. This is what the family needs. The family needs to move forward. Abundance and prosperity is slowing down because of the ego. And it's not healthy. It's not conducive to moving things forward within the lineage. Let's get some more out. Let's find out some more. Because many of you, abundance and prosperity has definitely been affected. Definitely. Okay. And, you know, I don't know if it's you, other members in the family, or whatever is going on. But, yeah. Okay, now let's find out how the ancestors supporting you with this right now. Okay. Collaborative dreaming. Okay. Be the hunter, not the hunted. Relax the hold of darkness and be at cause. Ooh, this is deep. Okay, releasing allegiances. Wow, this is really powerful. Okay, here we go. This is what I'm saying. Some of you are going to have to have some bold conversations. And it's not easy. You know what I mean? It's not easy to talk. Some of these people may be elders, okay, that you have to talk to or older people within the family. And you know how that goes. Older people stuck in their ways, been doing the same thing. They know it all. You know, they've got that age on them. So that means, you know, no one can say nothing to them because they've got the age. And it's not to say we don't respect these individuals because we do. You know what I mean? We respect them. We respect their age. We respect the level of wisdom that they do hold. But let me give you a secret. You're wiser than these individuals that have all this age on them. Okay? You have more wisdom. You have more knowledge. You have more clarity because guess what? The ancestors gifted you with it. So I don't care, again, if you're 25. I don't care if you're 35. I don't care your age. It does not matter. Age has nothing to do with this right now. You have the wisdom, the knowledge, and the clarity, and the truth to move things forward. You just had to tap into that bravery and that confidence. Many of you have already been tapping in. Some of you are afraid. And this is why the ancestors are helping you to release that allegiance. Don't just think to yourself, okay, this person is 74, you know, I can't, I got to pussyfoot around what I'm saying to this person because, 
you know, their age here. Be respectful. We're not disrespecting anyone. We're not, you know what I mean? Like that's not, your ancestors don't want you to come from that place, but they want you to understand your level of wisdom. It doesn't matter whether this person, how long they've been on here on this earth. You have more wisdom than they do. And don't come from an egotistical place. That's not what this is about. Be so divine and pure about it and be respectful, but understand your assignment and move it act accordingly. This is what you're here to do. It's not about being, you know, like, let's just say, for example, the previous generation, this could be like your parents and like, you know what I'm saying? Parents and like um, uncles and aunts, you know, feeling like you got to side with this individual because no, the ancestors are helping you to break that down because as a leader, you are your own ally right now, okay? And this is about getting everybody on the same page and getting everybody on the same team and getting everybody to see the vision and see where things can go and see how things can move forward in a productive way. You right now, with this Be the Hunter, you have an owl spirit animal here. Your ancestors, they have animal spirit guides that are helping you, supporting you, okay? You have an owl spirit guide here. That means your wisdom, your sight, your vision, your visionary individual. They're helping you to tap into that and they're helping you go after what needs to happen. Okay, so yes. So your ancestors are saying that they want you to be the leader. Don't fall in line with, you know, with what everyone else. They want you to step up and take control. And they're giving you that owl spirit animal there. Again, showing you your wisdom, showing you that you do know, you do have what it takes, and you are ready. You're ready to do this. With this collaborative dreaming, this is saying that your ancestors want to collaborate with you because, again, they're giving you the guidance. They're giving you the messages. They got you. They keep saying, tell Pal to, we got you. They got you. So they're like, collaborate with us. Ask us for help ask for support, ask us for what you need, tell us what you need. Some of you just hold it all in and you know what I mean? You just keep going and the ancestors are saying, hey, leaders need help too. Leaders need support too. And you know, one thing I know about my journey is they're only going to do but so much, like your spiritual team. Like they're going to, like, they'll watch you continue to go in circles and they'll try to help you, but it's like, they want you to surrender and ask for help. And that's really what I'm getting here, pal, too. Some of you may be saying like, you need a clearer picture or clearer vision or like, you know, you need just support. So just really, you know, however you want to ask, maybe it's like you, you know, verbally ask, you pray, you write it down, write a letter to the ancestors, whatever it is, but just ask them for help. And, you know, they give you downloads and inspiration through your dreams. They help guide you through the dream space that they are also saying they want you to collaborate. What is the vision that you see for the family? They want to co-create that with you. Okay. And finally, they want you to, they want you to be that light, you know, with this card here, this is really beautiful. They want you to shine. You know, it's a lot of darkness. It's darkness in the family. It's a lot of pride and ego issues here. It's a lot of people that feel like they know it all. They want you to be that light. They want you to guide that family, get things structured, to put things together, put the bring the family together, unite the family, and do it from a place of light, purity, and divinity. And you can be yourself and you ground in that energy and ground yourself and anchor yourself in your leadership. Anchor yourself in the leadership. They're helping you. They're, help, they're helping you to ground in your leadership and anchor your light and affirm with yourself you are the leader of the family and step into that and know that, again, this is what you are supported to do and this is what you're meant to do. Now, let's see. What do the ancestors want for you to do? How can you help this process? In the world, not of the world, okay? Listening for the truth. She feels she knows. Focus on the light. Okay. So the ancestors, the number 10 seems to be really prominent here too. Seven, 10, seven, three, four. The ancestors want for you to listen for the truth. This is again, it's like 
they give you messages. And for some of you, this is about like conversations that you're going to have to have with certain people and some things that you may have to say to certain people. And again, these are courageous conversations. It's not always easy, but they want you to listen and let them guide you. Let them show you, let them support you, allow yourself to be supported, allow yourself to be guided and listen for the truth. Because for some of you, someone here is going to find out about a family member really being deceptive. Okay. And this family member has been stealing or stealing money, or they've been stealing from individuals in the family, or they've just been betraying or lying to individuals in the family. This person has been very deceptive and this may be hurtful. Okay, I'm going to be honest here. This may be very hurtful, but the ancestors want you to know that when they give you the, the downloads of the truth, when they give you that information, they want you to listen and they want you to act accordingly and they want you to, you know, you honor your feelings here because with this, she feels and she knows, this is about you honoring the feelings that you feel. If you feel some shifty energy from certain family members, if you feel like certain family members really don't have your best interests at heart, but they're smiling in your face and they're going along with what, you, what you're saying, honor your feelings, honor your intuition, honor what you know. Again, you have been given specific support and help and gifts to do this work. So you are more intuitively gifted than many people in your family because you are the leader. You're here to unite. So there's some things that you're going to know about people that other people are not going to know. And you may question it like, wow, is this the truth? Has this family member really been sleeping with this other you know, family member, spouse, or because there's some type of deceptive behavior going on here for some of you. And it's some type of like deep deception, stealing or sleeping with someone else's partner or just kind of some kind of like dirty underhanded stuff. And again, it's going to be hurtful and it may feel like it's just too out of control to be the truth. But the ancestors are saying, you know, you feel it, you know it, and honor that and honor your intuition and trust yourself. They want you to be in the world, but not of the world. This is in the mix, but not of the mix. Okay. What does that mean? That means you're with the other people, you know, you're with the people in the family, but you know your role. You know you're a leader. You know that you speak differently, act differently. You know, like you're not always doing everything that they're doing or saying everything that they're saying, or, you know, you're not, you're with them, but you're not always on that same page as them. Many of you have a higher level frequency, a higher vibration. And your vibration is supportive of your leadership. So there's some things that you're going to be into that they're not into and vice versa because the, the wavelength, the frequency is not the same. So if they're, you know, talking like let's just say family members are getting together and they're talking about other another family member like, oh, you know, look at what they did. Look at what they said. You know, they're being very critical and judgmental. Don't engage. You know what I mean? Like, no. And, and as a leader, you you could really shut it down. You know what I'm saying? And shut it down in a way where it's like, hey, you know, we don't know what this person is dealing with. So let's not talk shit because it's not cool. You know what I'm saying? Something like that. Um, focus on the light. This is about focusing on your light, okay? Focusing on your light, focusing on your divinity, focusing on your gifts, focusing on the journey ahead. And focusing on who you are. You know, you're going to have family members that are going to challenge you. You're going to have family members that are going to try to test you, that are going to try to tell you you don't have what it takes or, you know, bring up your past or, you know, because that's what, you know, people love to do that when someone tries to step up and do something. People love to be like, well, remember when you were this and remember when you did that. You know, you're going to just have to continue to focus on who you are and ground yourself in that light and that knowing that you know yourself. You know what you're here to do. You know what you're being supported to do. Some of you, yeah, you have, everyone has a past here. And this is about when that's in the world, but not of the world. Okay. They try to throw your past up in your face. Let's not engage. You know, you, you don't need to go tit for tat. You don't need to get on their level like, hey, well, you know, let's throw that back in your direction. As a leader, no, you don't do that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what you're here to do. Like, people are being proud to say this saying online, like, oh, yeah, you go low, I'm going to hell. That's not even funny. The thing about it is, it's like, 
It's not funny. It's not cool. And you know what? You're just showing that you're really hurt by your experiences too. But let me not get off track. But what I'm just trying to say is this. You focus on your light and you focus on your light and your leadership. Because as a leader, you don't want to stoop down to those levels because that brings your vibration down. And your vibration can't be lower because you're leading the family. Okay, so let's find out your final messages here. Let's get into your final messages. Adjustment. Looking back, moving forward. Wow, see, this has been the theme for this reading today. River of blessings, releasing constraints. Hidden knowledge, Akashic records, silent understanding, precognition, psychic ability, future vision. See, this is what I'm saying here. Many of you, you have it. You know what I mean? You have it. You have what it takes. There's no looking back at this point. This is all about forward momentum, moving forward. The ancestors are releasing the constraints so the blessings can pour down. The family... So, sorry about that. So, the ancestors are saying, hey... Listen, we are releasing the constraints so these blessings can flow because the abundance and the wealth within the family, within the lineage has been stagnated and it's gone on too long and it's time for that to be over with. There's no more looking back. It's time to move forward. We have the owl here again. We have the jaguar here as well. We have the leopard or the lynx, excuse me. So they're saying move forward, move forward within leadership move forward within your light, move forward with what you know. Again, you have these abilities, psychic abilities here. You have a strong level of intuition. You have a strong vision. You know, you are being guided to know where the family lineage needs to go as the leader of the family. So you have been gifted with these things to move the family forward to more wealth and abundance. Trust it. Trust it. Trust your path. Trust where it's going. You're going to have more knowledge and wisdom that's going to be um, revealed to you through your Akashic records, meaning from past lives, more past life wisdom that's going to come through, that's going to help you with your leadership and help you to move forward. And it's just going to be silently understood within yourself. Like, it's just going to be like a quiet integration where it's like, you're going to be able to think quickly on your feet. You're going to be very clever. You're going to be very strategic. You're going to be very swift acting with the type of solutions that you're going to come up with because it's going to be just this integration that's just happening for you overnight where you're just going to know what to do and you're just going to put things into action and move forward. Many of you are going to be putting some type of plan into action very soon and moving forward with whatever this plan is that your ancestors have, you know, given you, gifted you, or you co-created with your ancestors to begin to start moving things forward. With this coming up, this is about action. This is about moving forward and moving to the next level, okay? So many of you, the action, the plan, whatever that is, the next step is coming into your reality very soon. Okay. And I see two, two, two here. Okay. So if no one told you that they love you today, I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. I'm proud of you. Please be proud of yourself. Love yourself. Honor yourself. Cherish yourself. Be kind to yourself. Focus on your light. Focus on leadership. Focus on uniting your family. Focus on your wisdom, okay? Your intuition, your psychic abilities, your spiritual gifts here. You're very strong. You're very capable. You're very supported. You are loved. You are valued. You are supported in leadership, okay? Love yourself. Thank you. I'll see you next time. Hi, everyone. Hi, Pal 3. Welcome. Welcome back to the Divine Healing with Love Experience. Welcome back to the Capital L-O-V-E tribe. My name is Nicole. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your support. Thank you for showing up for yourself, for doing this healing work, this ancestral work. Thank you so much. Let's get into this, okay? Brilliant beliefs, luminous life force, personal power, healing generational curses. So, there's curses here around stepping into your brilliance, stepping into your own genius, your inner genius, stepping into, for some of you, is leadership, stepping into your own personal power, really letting that, letting your light shine, really letting yourself be seen, really shining in your light, shining in your glory, 
there's curses around that or there's trauma around that. People in the past and from past generations or other people in the lineage, they have not trusted their light or they didn't trust the ability to shine their light or they didn't believe they had what it takes to shine their light. There's a big energy here around the solar plexus chakra. So that's about personal power, confidence, bravery, boldness, action. There's cursed trauma or trauma around shining your light and standing in your light and standing in your own, being confident in your light and being confident in yourself and confident to be who you are and that you are brilliant. You are a genius. You are inspirational. You're very creative. You're passionate. Other individuals in the family have shied away from this. Okay, and they did so because they didn't believe in themselves or they did not have that confidence to shine. They had the same or similar gifts as you, similar abilities as you, but they did not trust themselves or they didn't have faith and they did not have that confidence. Let's find out some more. Okay, and I just want to say you are brilliant and you are a genius and you are meant to shine. You are meant to be seen. You are meant to be very confident. Eight of Pentacles, Ace of Swords, Queen of Cups, Five of Wands, Nine of Swords. Okay, so let's talk about this generational, what is this generational curses here? There's been curses around or trauma around the feminine energy here. Now, this is not, I mean, this could be feminines in the family, but just a feminine energy period. There's just been a lack of confidence and a lack of believing that you have what it takes to shine. There's energy around not feeling good enough. There's energy around not being, not feeling beautiful enough, not feeling skinny enough, not feeling, um, like, you know, you have what it takes to be seen, a fear of being seen, a fear of being acknowledged, a fear of physical features not being in a certain place in order to be accepted, okay? Um, there's this energy of wanting to just kind of just like, you know, be in the shadow, be in the cut, be behind the scenes, like, you know, no one really knows, almost just like an unassuming energy, almost just like it's easier to just, you know, like, let, let's just say this, for example, okay, and I'm not minimizing anything here, okay, please don't take that as this, but for some of you, it's like um, some of the people in the family would rather be a stay-at-home mom or stay-at-home parent or, you know, have a job that doesn't really align with their purpose or their true abilities because they're fearful of going after what they really feel inspired by or what they really feel passionate about. Or, you know, they're fearful of being bold and confident of, you know, for some of you, it's like I'm getting some type of musical abilities here. So some of the people in the family had musical abilities, but they weren't confident. They weren't confident in their abilities. They weren't confident to be on stage. They weren't confident to shine. So they shied away from that and just basically um, lowered themselves to do something else, which was really just not what they were supposed to do, but because they didn't have that confidence and that belief that they could do it, that they can make it and that they could shine and they had, they were enough. There's a lot of here around not feeling like you are enough, feeling like you're not pretty enough. You're not, you know, your hair is in a certain way or your clothes are not a certain way or your body's not a certain way, things like that. There's also energy here around jealousy and competition. There's a strong energy here around other individuals in the family feeling jealous and competitive, feeling um, like if someone, you know, dares to step out the box and do something differently or someone dares to go after their dream that, you know, other people in the family get very jealous. 
they get, you know, they can make mean and rude comments. They, um, and it's not because it's like really deep down in their heart, they're happy for that person, but because they don't have that confidence and they don't know how to shine like the person who is taking the leap forward to be confident and bold and go after their dreams, they, um, they project that energy onto that person and it creates conflict and it creates drama and it creates that competitive, jealous energy within the family. For some of you, it's within like siblings and cousins. It's always within that generation. And there's been many generations, at least five generations of competitiveness and jealousy and always like one or two people that step out there that go for their dream and the other people don't and the other people are very jealous or they try to compare themselves. There's also this energy of comparison, okay? Other people are being compared to each other and pit against each other. You know, it's like if someone knows how to sing, someone is saying, well, why don't you know how to sing? And it's like, well, wait a minute, okay? that Maybe that's not my ability. Maybe I'm gifted in something else. Why do I have to know how to sing? You know what I mean? It's kind of that energy that people are not allowed to really explore their own genius, their own creative genius, their own passions, their own gifts, because it's like jealousy, energy, competitive energy, people being pit against each other. And it's also this like this lack of confidence, this lack of this feeling like you just don't have what it takes. You're not good enough. You're not good enough to succeed and choosing to go on a different path because of that belief. And like I said, one or two people will step out there and do it, but then other people in the family just get mad or, you know, they get very angry and jealous acting and they try to isolate that person that does go after their dreams and try to make them feel less than or not worthy for just being who they are. Okay, now let's find out some more. Let's find out what do... What do the ancestors, how are they helping you to heal this, okay? Big, bold vision, okay? Going beyond normal. Visions of life beyond death against the grain, okay? So how are the ancestors helping you? Pal, what is this, pal three. The ancestors are helping you by giving you this big, bold vision. And that means not only are they supporting you with your solar plexus energy, but they're also supporting you with having like going after your dreams. They're pushing you. They're pushing you. And they're also like guiding you and telling you like, even if you don't believe it, just try, just do it. And they're saying like, the more you do it, the more you'll believe. The more you get up, get yourself out there, the more you'll see. Like they're giving you this big vision. Many of you are visionary. You have a strong third eye chakra here. Very strong third eye, very strong crown chakra, very strong throat chakra, okay? So they're giving you this gift of vision so you can see yourself on the stage or whatever it is, just out in the spotlight because many of you, you're meant to be in the spotlight. Because that's been part of the curse or the trauma within the family. Other individuals were supposed to be in the spotlight too, but they didn't, again, they didn't believe in themselves or they didn't have faith or, you know, they just didn't have that confidence. So you are healing that by being in the spotlight, by being confident, by being bold. And the ancestors are helping you. They are assisting you with that. And some of you, you may not have been the most confident person. And it's like little by little, you're gaining more confidence and they're helping you with that. It's almost like you get a little bit of confidence, they're matching you and they're giving you more. And it's like, they're just throwing that confidence into your, your confidence bank and they're upgrading your solar plexus chakra overnight. And you're going to see how they are aligning you and they're helping you. The more you step out there in the spotlight, we have the peacock spirit animal here. And that represents like, you know, strutting your stuff, showing yourself off, showing yourself off in the spotlight. This is how you heal this curse, this trauma, being in the spotlight, loving your uniqueness, loving your beauty, loving and accepting yourself. 
Many of you have ancient ancestors here that are guiding you and they're supporting you in the spiritual realm. Many of you have mediumship abilities and you are very wise, okay? You have a lot of wisdom and you get this wisdom from your ancient ancestors. They're helping you, they're guiding you, they're giving you that vision where you can have your eyes closed and you still know where you're going. You still see where things are going. You are following that road of your passion. You are aligning yourself with what you're meant to do. And many of you are breaking the curse. You're breaking the chains of the past and you are being fully supported. So the ancestors want you to know you're very unique. You look different, you act different, you move differently. And this is purposeful. This is meant to be, this is who you are. And they want you, they're helping you to embrace more of that. They're helping you to love more of it. And they're helping to show you that this is why you're going to shine in the spotlight. It's yes, it's your gifts. Yes, it's your passion. But it's going to be your confidence and your uniqueness that's really going to allow you to shine. The fact that you're not like everyone else. The fact that you don't look like everyone else. The fact that you are different and you're going to represent your lineage. Many of you have been chosen as that representative for your lineage, to represent your lineage because you have ancient ancestors here. You have other ancestors in other realms where it's like they're bragging on you. They're like, yeah, look at our pal three. You know, you are out there shining or you will be shining for your family, for your lineage. And so they are really helping you to see your own beauty inside and out and to not only see it, but love it and know that that's a part of your gifts and that's what helps you to shine. And that's like really being grounded in that you shine even more because you embrace more of who you are because that's who you are because you're not normal going beyond normal. You're not normal and you're not here to be normal and you're not here to be like everyone else, including the individuals in your family. You're doing something different. You have the courage, the bravery and the boldness to step out there to show your gifts to show your passion, to show your talents, to show how beautiful you really are inside and out. And other individuals from past generations and even this generation, they didn't have the courage and the confidence to do so. So the ancestors are helping you to see that not only are your gifts, vision, and your path, is it different? It's not like everyone else is unique, but they want for you to love it and they're supporting you. And loving that and loving how there's no one like you. There's no one that has your path and your journey and there will never be anyone like you. They want you to embrace more of your physical body here. With this against the grain, this is about, and I'm going to talk more the other side of this, but with her and her body, with her being here nude, this is about loving your physical body and loving all of who you are, loving what you see in the mirror embracing what you see in the mirror, loving your body changes, loving, you know, your physical features, telling yourself you're beautiful, accepting yourself, you know, really embracing your physical body because there's something here with that. And this is not just you. It's the generational energy that's within your lineage because the past generations were very judgmental and critical of themselves. And this is why they did not step out there in the spotlight because there was something that they told themselves that wasn't good enough with their physical appearance. You know, whether it was the hair, their skin, their body, their clothes, you know, it really more so physical, not really clothes, but something with the physical body. So they're helping you to love more of your physical body and the things that you want to adjust or whatever, they're helping you to do that. You know, they're helping you to get that in line and get it in order so you can love and embrace your physical body more and more because that's a big part of your journey. And that's a big part of the generational curse within your journey. For some of you, it is the color of your skin or it's your hair or some things like that. And they want you to love it. They want you to love your color. They want you to love your hair. They want you to love your body. They want you to love all of you and embrace all of you and know that you're so gorgeous. You are so gorgeous and there's no one like you. Absolutely no one. One of one. Okay, now let's find out some more. Now, what do the ancestors want for you to do to help with this journey? Pandora's gift. Dream a beautiful dream. 
Beyond the mind, the heart beats. Defend to the end the worthwhile. Okay. So the ancestors want for you to continue to have these dreams and these goals and these intentions. They want for you to dream big. We see here, it's like the whole planet. They want you to have big, bold dreams because they're supporting you. They're helping to give you that energy and they're giving you the space and the freedom to bring these things to the ground, to bring these things to fruition. So they're like, keep dreaming, dream big, bigger, and even bigger. Don't limit yourself. Don't stop yourself. Don't say, oh, it's just too out there. This is too outrageous for this to ever happen. They said, no, write it down, um, store it in your heart, set intentions around it. You know what I mean? Of course, surrender and let go and trust that if it's meant to happen, it will happen and you'll be supported and in divine timing. But dream big, like go all the way up and go big because you are going to be, for many of you, you're the first one or, you know, you are doing this so differently where you are paving the way. You're paving the way for the future generations. And it's going to be you that they talk about, you know, when you're, you know, older or you're not here, they're still going to be talking about you and what you did and what you accomplished. So go all the way up. Okay. The ancestors want you to see yourself as a gift. Again, that physical body you see, it's like, she's almost naked here. They want you to see yourself in all of your glory, see yourself in your light, see your beauty, see, you know, love on yourself. Tell yourself why you love yourself. Tell yourself why you love your physical features. Love on yourself. Accept yourself. Radical acceptance. Love all of you. Love every single part of you. Every single part. Know that you're a gift. Know that you are a gift. Not only are you a gift, your ancestors feel like you're a gift, but you're a gift to your family and you're healing the family and you're changing the narrative of the family and you are bold, brave, and confident and you're doing it. And the ancestors are supporting you big time. Many of you are very highly favored and supported here. They also want you to Follow your heart. You see, many of you have this cosmic energy here. This is also just like spiritual family coming through, like spiritual ancestors. Like you have many ancestors from many different dimensions here. You're very connected within the universe. So they're like, follow your heart. You know, like beyond the mind, the heart beats. Like what is it Pal 3 wants? Because whatever it is you want, you will have. And they're going to support you because... They want for you to fulfill your destiny and fulfill all that your heart desires. They want to give it to you. And they're like, not only saying, are you deserving and worthy of it? They want you to know that you're deserving and worthy of it, but they want you to know that this is going to heal, just heal that energy within your family that's so needed because it's been so many generations of the same story over and over and over again. And sometimes it is circumstances, but sometimes it was just that lack of bravery and confidence. So they're like, whatever your heart's desire, you will have. Tell us what you want. We will help you to get it. But they want you to really tap into your heart space and really follow your passions and follow your heart. Finally, defend to the end the worthwhile. They want you to know you're worth the while. And you defend yourself and they will defend you and they will support you and they will guide you. They have your back. They keep saying, we got you. We love you. We value you. We appreciate you. You stand tall, stand firm in the truth, in your light, in your divinity, in your purity. You are supported. You are loved. You are valued. Whatever it is you want, they will give to you. Tell them what it is you want. Set those intentions around it. And they're just like, you like it's nothing for you to worry about. They want you to know there's nothing. They want you to be completely fearless. No fear. They're saying it's nothing for you to worry about. They got you all the way. A million percent. Okay, final messages here. Let's see. Wisdom, learning, joy, art, music. Okay, so music is really prominent here. Divine masculine, electric, active power. Earth magic, fearlessness, removing obstacles, healing the heart, the power of self-love. So again, with this divine masculine energy, that's talking about your solar plexus, okay? That solar plexus chakra, the solar plexus deals with 
the divine masculine energy, action, bravery, boldness, courageousness, courage. That's that energy. It's active. It's active right now, very active, meaning your power to take action and be confident and bold and brave is very active. Continue to tap into that energy. Continue to take that inspired, aligned action when you are told to do so. Continue to follow your heart and everything else will align. Stay grounded, stay present, be grounded in the moment and present in the moment. And, you know, when you're told to take action, do it. Continue to heal the heart and you heal the heart by the self-love, loving yourself. Self-love will heal your heart, will make you whole, will make you be confident. Self-love, self-acceptance, self-love, self-acceptance. The more you love yourself, the more you forgive yourself, the more you accept yourself in your journey, the more your heart will be healed and you will be able to receive, 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 because that's how we receive. We receive through the heart center, the heart chakra, okay? That's how you receive the abundance that you deserve to receive. And your ancestors want to give it to you. So the more you love yourself, accept yourself, the more you will heal your heart so you can receive what you deserve. Right now, you are unlocking some more wisdom within, some wisdom within your Akashic energy, your Akashic records within your soul. So this is about learning, embracing more joy, Art and music is very prominent here. Tapping into those energies, that creative energy, that watery energy, that sacral chakra energy will help you to unlock some more of your wisdom and some more of your gifts and your abilities. And finally, earth magic, fearlessness, removing obstacles. Again, they are removing obstacles. Your ancestors are really supporting you. You're highly favored, highly supported. They're removing obstacles from you at this moment on your journey, they're just asking you to be fearless and take the action when you're told to do so. Being bold, brave, confident, no fear, no fear, fearless, big, bold, brave, confident. They're like, we got you. They're removing the obstacles. They just need for you to go after it when they tell you to do so and be fearless, 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 fearless. If no one told you they love you today, I love you. Thank you so much for being here. I'm proud of you. Please be proud of yourself. Love yourself. Honor yourself. Cherish yourself. Accept yourself. Forgive yourself. Pour into yourself. Tell yourself what you love about yourself. Look in the mirror. Tell yourself what you love about yourself. Give yourself a hug. Love on yourself. Be kind to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. You got this. There's no one like you. One of one. A rare, unique beauty. Thank you for being here. Thank you for shining your light. I'll see you next time. 